right on. That was the Crash Mats with Watch Band, and I got on my turn. I was skanking away to that one. Love the ska feel to that. I mean, what a great tune that was. And, you know, <clears throat> I was telling Mike G that remind me of old Boston's and, like, uh, um, oh, man. The song they had was called Spider on My Bed, and it was, uh, Can't help you. I, and I just mentioned it too, it's going to kill me now, I'll remember it later, but uh, anyways, they had a song called Spider My Bed, but it just reminded me of, of those guys a lot. Like, But even, even old Moonska stuff, like the toasters and stuff like that, you know, all that record label in, in New York. So, but yeah, great ska team, man, loved it, like really cool. I'll go, yes, um, again. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed the ska, and it felt like, like he was saying, um, stuff I've heard before. But I really like the aggressive vocals on that. That like it's almost like almost growling, it's like really angry. I loved it. <laughs> like, I really love oh. that. Let's go bowling. Let's go bowling. That's what it is. That was a bad man. Let's go bowling. Okay, okay, I'm good. Well remembered. I'm I'm with you, Mike. I think the the because the vocal is is much more like Joe Strummer than it is kind of your traditional yeah. um, yes. kind of ska band, isn't it? It's much yeah. punkier, much more aggressive, which I think is really, really cool. I thought that was um, amazing. Yeah, that really stood out for me. You what, sorry? I said that really stood out for me was the vocals on top of the, the ska, was the, the vocals, because you don't hear that yeah. often. It was very unique to my ear, at least. You know, I don't listen to much ska, yeah. so... No, I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree because it kind of it makes it a little bit more kind of hardcore. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah, no, definitely, yep. definitely. Um, and the other thing that's really it cool. It fit in is, really well. Sorry, I want to say that it fit in really well with that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but also, I mean, how good was the saxophone solo? Yeah, that was man. So you smooth. Know what? That was the first that thing that Mike G commented on. Been, Sorry, <laughs> I, I was gonna say that was so sweet. That could have been in any, you know, that that could have been Miles Davis or whatever. Yeah. You know, that could have been any of those kind of old jazz bands where the sax was the lead kind of thing. Um, and it also, you know, it, it, it was like the tonality of it was almost like Baker Street or something like that. Do you know what I mean? It had that right. kind of, it was a real range of playing on the sax. Um, and then when you put that that bass line of the drums and the rhythm behind it that gives you that scar feel, it really added something to the tune. It was really, really unique, I thought. Um, yeah, great, great interpretation of the genre and a great tune. Just a couple of things uh, for saxophone. Saxophone, saxophone, <laughs> you know, from the Simpsons, like, <laughs> And yeah, you know, you're, you're you're right. The 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 saxophone was amazing. That was my and, first comment. Was like, well, I that's really what I was this. saying. That's the next <laughs> point again. That was your first comment. Was the saxophone song right away? And uh, then I really started listening to the vocals. Well, yeah, great <laughs> tune. So we're gonna move on to our next one. And uh, this one we finally got took a couple of weeks because of just whatever call that communication communication more happened. So it's a band called Funkzilla. That song's called Quasimatic. Dig this. <laughs> Jack and now there ain't no going back Take it to the section and look you're my fat child Take it to the section and check you what I have Well, you can run but you can't hide Cause this is Funkzilla and I'm Mr. Hyde When I'm rapping nothing happens as I'm sitting on my own Now I'm thinking to myself about maybe going home I'm trying to run but my legs won't move But I'm feeling like I'm stuck here in this group Won't bow down to your knees You're never gonna see me on my knees So bitch please, can't you see That you're stuck in a formatic galaxy Take my hands and I'll shake it Freak out the thin blue line in society Never gonna listen, never gonna know What's magic? Disco! You can run from me But it's impossible to hide I can told you from the future in my mind This function to reality Yeah. <laughs> 
won't bow down to your knees You're never gonna see me on my knees So bitch, please, can't you see that you're stuck in a cosmetic galaxy Take my hand and I'll say you're free I'm the thin blue line of society Right on, Funk Zilla with Quasmatic, and they are on Spotify. I'm not sure they're part of the Monster Thread. They might be, but a really good band. Obviously, really funky and really cool. Remind me again of a little bit of Old Chili Peppers, a little bit of Old Parliament. You know, a little bit, a little bit of pretty much everything like Sly and the Family Stone, but really, really cool. And I love the guitar work and the bass, which is uh, uh, fucking amazing. I really got into that. For me, uh. It reminded me a lot of like uh, Robert Trujillo when he's with uh, Suicidal Tendencies and Infectious Groups before he got with Ozzy and Black Label Society and Metallica. Man, he played, I don't know, it was all over the place. It was, And it's front and center, and I love it. I'm, I'm totally down with that. That's that's such a good <laughs> reference. <laughs> that was OPP. I love that. Yeah, man, the, but the yeah. bass, you're right, it's just so out there it's awesome and um, these guys are, are actually from Worthing which is just down the road from me and we've, we've played in Worthing a few times um, one in five we did uh, last year we did New Year's Eve Eve which was the 30th of December um, <laughs> which is a really cool night uh, but yeah I, I, I did I did go and see them once um, probably about a year ago and they were absolutely fantastic they just had so much energy and so much uh, insanity on stage it was really really cool they're a really really good band um, I think yeah the, the, the obvious kind of influences are probably like you know, Chili Peppers and right. um, Rage Against the Machine and things like that and there's, there's a few but what's interesting actually is Chili Peppers and Rage Against the Machine come out quite a lot when you listen to a lot of stuff on this Very show true. we kind of hear them and that's partly because both of those bands did quite a you know, diverse Very um, range of music, yep. uh, but also partly just because you know the, the, this, there's so much you can take. So if you take these guys and the final clause of um, the, was it Tactus, Tactus, or, Tactus yeah. or yeah, whatever it is that we that we played, you know, a few of their tunes a few weeks ago, then you can tell that both are influenced by both those bands, so they've taken them to completely sure. different places, which is really really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I love these guys. I heard uh, for me, there's a little bit of Jane's addiction in there as well. It's oh yeah, yeah, yeah nice, you're nice. totally right about that. Good, yeah. good pick, man. Nothing shocking for sure. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, but yeah, I, I think they're wicked. They're a great band. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, here we go. Just because I made, <laughs> I made the comment of the whole Robert Hill thing, um, I want to say if I, I didn't mention it on the last show because I'm not sure if I was here after the Metallica show and I mentioned it or not. The best part of the show was when Robert Trujillo played uh, Anesthesia Pulling Teeth, Cliff Burton's from Kill 'Em All, and they had Cliff Burton in slow motion on, on the big screen, and Robert was like facing his back is facing the uh, the audience because they wanted to look at Cliff, and he played it perfectly. Like it was the highlight of the show for me and my brother. I'm not sure if every other Metallica fan probably under Sandman was, but for me, oh my god, that. That was amazing. <laughs> Enter Sandman's a great chicken, but I mean that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, when I saw Metallica, Enter Sandman wasn't even in my top ten. Nope, 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 nope. It's a great top. Shouldn't be. Nope, nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't stick around for it. Actually, we left before that because we wanted to get in the car and get out, get out on the highway before everyone else got out in Toronto. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, if now, you, if now you, I'll tell you what we had a we had a debate, didn't we last week? We did. The new Metallica. Album. Yep. What are your thoughts on it? As our metal correspondent, Mike G, what are your thoughts on the <laughs> new Metallica? Album? Uh, um, uh, World on Fire, or what's it called? Um, I can't remember what it's called. No, World on Fire is the Slash album, isn't it? Yeah, Slash. Oh no, uh, Hardwired uh, to yeah, Destruction. That one. That's one. That Sorry. One, yeah. 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 Um. Actually, I like it. Uh, Yay! Me I do. too. But I do. He doesn't. <laughs> nope. nope uh, I, I, I don't think it's a great album, but honest to God, they played those songs the best because I saw that, that, that tour. Oh, please. <laughs> so they, 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 honest to God, they played those songs the best. They screwed up 
the first song in the script was for whom uh no um where am i wrong from the black album so i didn't really give a shit about that <laughs> but uh they only played one song off of Master of Puppets. And oh. it was the title track, Master of Puppets. And they're going through it. My brother turns to me because we're standing sideways. We're on the floor. We paid 210 bucks for these tickets. We're on the floor. My brother turns to me because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused. I, I knew that what the song was. I knew kind of what they're going through. And he turns to me and goes, I know this song at the back of my hand, but I can't follow it. And I'm like... Yeah, what the hell are they doing? Like, it's like it sounds like they're all off, uh, like off tune. They just didn't rehearse. <laughs> it was like oh, I paid two hundred ten bucks for this. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I'm mad. You and your drugs. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but again, so that's why maybe anesthesia. But they they did Seeking Destroy was done really well, so I like, can't complain about that. You know, and all the new songs were all done really well. Um, but yeah, like. One song of the Black Album where like it started off really slow and they got really fast, so it was all I think it was all Lars screwing it up for everyone else. <laughs> and but like yeah, I don't know what they were doing. And the worst part about it is that I can't remember what song James came out with a vest opened. <laughs> he should not have done that. He he he's an ugly motherfucker. <laughs> oh. you know, if look at my chest here. Yeah, look at my gut and my saggy tits and all that like oh, that, whoa. if, if you're gonna come out with a vest on do that vest on. It, was, it was a cool vest because he had like a like you know iron maiden and motorhead and like he had all the patches on it so it looked like you know a metal thing but and he had i'm open, bad right but he come had on. open and it's like and they have it on the big screen you're just like oh god oh god oh, i'll go i'll go <laughs> seriously have some shame and just you know uh, do it together and don't show off your Man tits. <laughs> yeah. He has man boobs. <laughs> so next uh, next up, uh, uh, get off our sidetrack here. We have a brand new song by Black Tooth. Uh, who, uh, they've been working on a new album right now. And they haven't done anything for a while, but it's a great tune. So this is Black Tooth with Get Down. Dig this. <laughs> 